Did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money per year tax-free? If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome back to Money with Mission. This is Dr. Felicia Fro, your host, where we believe at Money with Mission that every woman should have the financial ability to walk away from any job or relationship that is not in her best interest. While there are a variety of ways to get there, we work, focus on cash flowing assets, particularly in real estate and businesses, to help us get to that point where we are not relying on our W-2 income, our spouse, the government, anybody like that to help us get our money. All right, today we have Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Jay comes to us to talk about private lending and getting private money for your real estate investing. He began investing in real estate in 2003. At the start of his career, he relied on local bankers like most of us do, getting loans in a traditional way, because that's all we know, right? He got tired of those personal guarantees for every deal, origination fees, all the things that go with that private, that banker's mortgage, all the intense scrutiny on everything that you've done in your life. After the market crash in 2008, his banker cut him off. He had to abandon everything he had known about financing his deals. And then he heard about the world of private money. He developed his own system for gathering millions of dollars for his real estate deals. He has refined his system and is now repeatable and dependable. And he works with others to help teach them how to find private money. In a few months, few short months, Jay raised over $2.1 million in private money. And at first, like most of us do when something bad happens, we curse the event. Jay cursed his banker at the beginning, but then was very happy for the way things came out because it is it led him to where he is now being able to finance his deals and help private money lenders make money. Welcome to the show, Jay. Be the change you want to see. Make a difference by giving your money a purpose, a mission to do good. Welcome to Money With Mission, where we show you how to create passive income so that you have options for how to work and how to live your life while leaving a legacy of positive social impact. Welcome, Jay. Thanks so much for joining me today on the Money with Mission podcast. Absolutely, Dr. Fro. Now, let me tell you, I am so excited and so thankful that you invited me to come along, talk about what I'm the most passionate about, and that's private money for real estate deals. And the reason I'm so passionate is that private money's had more of an impact and a difference on our investing business than anything else we've done. Awesome. Okay, let's get the Elephant out of the room. Where are you from? Because I know people are hearing your accent. Huh? They can know. Okay, <laughs> what boy is this guy? <laughs> well, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we live here in eastern North Carolina in a really, really small town called Moorhead City, North Carolina, population 8,000 people. Oh my God. Uh, but we're here in a resort area. And so okay. my total target market's only 40,000 people where I live. Wow. Okay. So now you now you guys, he is in the United States. That's not some foreign accent. That's a United States accent. It's, yeah, it's pure T South. I'll tell you that. <laughs> pure T South. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jay, let's get into it here. Tell me your money story. How did you grow up? Were you born into money? Were you born knowing how to make money? How did you get to where you are today? Yes, I was very blessed, Dr. Fro, with being raised by an entrepreneur, my dad, Wallace Connor. He is now 91 years old and still doing deals. He's in the middle of a subdivision that he's building 350 new houses at 91 years old. Wow. And he says, Jay, when I stop, when I stop making a deal and I stop negotiating, I die. So I'm not ready to <laughs> die <keep> yet. <laughs> anyway. 
So, yes, I was raised around my dad. My dad actually put me to work in his company when in the summer of when I was 11 years old. Okay. And, and he put me on the telephone. He had an acceptance corporation, a finance company, if you will, that financed the mobile homes, that uh, the industry that he was in. And so in the summertime, before my voice even changed, the people I'm calling think I'm a woman that I'm talking over the phone. And he had me calling, checking people's credit and checking people's employment and talking to landlords and talking to furniture stores that finance these people. So I was so blessed to get this on-the-job training of communication and talking to people at a very, very young age. However, my attitude towards money changed drastically when actually it changed drastically when I was 24 years old and it changed again in January of 2009. And I'll share that story as well. So I had two like major shifts as far as my attitude towards money. I'll share real quick about the one when I was 24 years old. I got all caught up in wanting to get involved with multi-level marketing companies. I just okay. thought that just sounded so intriguing. And here's a big mind shift and a lesson that I learned. Anytime I got involved with an activity or a company, and the only reason that I was involved in it and interested in it was to make the money, I failed miserably. I never got off, got off a square one. Yeah. And, and every time I've been passionate about something that in business and I, and I had a good business plan to it, I just can't stop because I'm just really, it's all about the other people. It's all about leading with a servant's heart. So hopefully that answers the question. I'm not yes, sure. It does. Yes. <laughs> that's really, that's really good. But you were born to, to the family of entrepreneurs. I'm sure your mother was was not dragging your dad back. That's how he could advance the way he did with his mobile homes. I keep thinking mobile homes and I think campers, but that's not what you're talking about. You're thinking of... Yeah, a manufactured housing, uh, okay. if you will. So okay. yeah, most mobile homes in the industry that we're talking about was affordable housing. They were delivered and seldom were they ever moved again. Most yeah. of them just stayed right there on the spot. But the financing from Wall Street for the consumer financing for that product really fell out of favor big time in the early 2000s. And I knew if I ever got out of manufactured housing, I wanted to get into single family houses. So my wife, Carol Joy, and I, she's from Texas. We've been full time investing in single family houses primarily since 2003. Okay. That's about the same time I started 2004. Okay. And then we, so we both rode that nice way, <laughs> buying lots of things. Oh, yes. And I don't know if maybe you knew more than I did, but I learned how much I didn't know in 2007, 2008. Mm. Well, that's, that was my next big mind shift <laughs> on money. So from 2003 until January 2009, all I knew to do was go to the local bank, get on my hands and knees, put my hands underneath my chin and beg and persuade and pull up my skirt so they could see my personal assets and check my say, credit. Person, basically do colonoscopy to figure out if you're worth doing, giving loan and money to. It's Exactly. Yeah. And I tell you what, Dr. Fro, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting here at my desk in January 2009. I'd already been in this business for six years, doing very well. And I had a great relationship with my banker. His name was Steve. And he had funded a lot of deals for me in those first six years. And believe it or not, here in Eastern North Carolina, we still have these things called handsets that have cords attached to them, <laughs> telephones. Anyway, so I picked up my phone. But if anybody's not watching, he's talking about a landline. A Go ahead. <laughs> So anyway, I had two houses under contract. Okay. And, and so I call, I pick up the phone, I call Steve and, and I, Steve and I had had this kind of conversation many, many times. And I told him about the two deals under contract. Well, I learned like that, that my line of credit had been closed with no notice. I said, Steve, what in the world are you telling me you've closed my line of credit? And I've got a great relationship, never been late on payments. He said, Jay. Don't you know there's a global financial crisis going on right now? 
I said no, but now you just gave me a global financial crisis because now I can't fund my two deals that represented over $100,000. So I'm going to share this, Dr. Fro. I hung up my phone and I sat here. The power is in questions. Mm -hmm. Really good uh, questions. That's what love the power that. is. Love that. Yes. And I sat here and I asked myself a question that I'm going to share with you and your audience. And this question I'm getting ready to share from my experience will help fix any problem you've got, whether it's health, relationships, financial, career, it doesn't matter. And by the way, these people running around saying every problem's an opportunity, I want to throw up. I didn't have no opportunity. I had a problem, right? So here's the question I asked myself. I said, Jay, who do you know? You know, it's who, not how. I said, yep. who yep. do you know that can help you with your problem? Yep. And immediately when I asked myself that question, I immediately thought of Jeff Blankenship. Good friend of mine and Carol Joyce, he was living in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time and investing in single family houses. I called him up and told him what had just happened. He says, well, Jay, welcome to the club. I said, what club is that? He said, the club of having the bank shut you down. My bank shut me down last week. I said, well, how are you going to fund your deals? He says, well, have you ever heard of private money? I said, no. He says, have you ever heard of self-directed IRAs and how people can use their retirement funds to become a private lender and loan you money from their retirement funds and, and how they can be protected and get high rates of return and you win and they win. I said, no, I never heard of that, Jeff. So I put on my study hat mm -hmm. and I studied private money. Now, when I'm saying private money, I'm not talking hard money. I'm not talking institutional money. I'm talking about doing business with individuals, people just like you and me that either have their investment capital and or they got retirement funds. They'd like to be a passive investor, get nice returns, but they don't want to be out negotiating deals. Well, so let me tell you what I did. I put my opportunity, I put my program together as to what I was going to offer. To just starting out with people in my own connections. Yeah. People I go to church with, people in the Rotary Club, people in my business networking international club here locally. And I'm just going to start sharing my story and teaching people how they could be a private lender and get these high rates of returns safely and securely. And so in less than 90 days, I was blessed to be able to raise $2,150,000 in private money. I only had a million dollars at the local bank. So here in the midst of this global financial crisis, our income tripled, tripled because all these foreclosures were going on and the banks weren't loaning money. So you had to have the cash. Yeah. And so how did my attitude change? Well, here's how my attitude changed about borrowing money. This world of private money has got nothing to do with begging, selling, persuading, or trying to talk anybody to into anything. How did I raise that $2 million in less than 90 days? And how do I now have today 47 private lenders, individuals, funding our real estate deals, and I've never asked anybody for money? Well, here's the first step of the secret sauce. I put on my private money teacher hat. Okay. I got a hat that says private okay. money teacher. Private, and I, so I put, for anybody just listening, not watching, it's got some baseball cap that says private money teacher. <laughs> there you go. And so I took on this attitude of leading with a servant's heart and being a teacher and teaching people initially in my own network as to what private money is and what my, and what interest rate I'm, I'm going to be paying and how they can get their money back in case of an emergency and et cetera, without having a deal to pitch. Okay. That's another part of the secret sauce. Desperation has got a smell to it. Yes, it does. Yes, and it does. And if I'm talking about private money and how somebody can be a private lender and I got a deal for them to fund, that I'm already sounding desperate. A deal that you have to fund. I have to get this thing funded. I got to find the money. They can see it in your eyes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And hear it in your voice that you're struggling. So Absolutely. And new real estate investors or people that are just starting to raise capital, they'll say, well, Jay, how do I get over the fear of rejection? And I say, look, how can you be rejected if you're not asking anybody for anything? <laughs> 
you're simply sharing a way that they can get high rates of return with their retirement funds, with their investment capital. And I promise you, you're going to be sharing information with them that they've never heard before. And you don't have to ask them. You teach it and they're going to tell you if they, got, if they want to get involved or not without you even having to ask. So then here's the other part of the secret sauce on how to get that funding without ever asking. So let's say, well, Dr. Fro, let's say that you are one of my new private lenders and you've told me you've got $150,000 and you've got it sitting in a 401k from a previous employer or something. And you'd like, you'd like, to, you'd like to do this. Well, then here's exactly what I would tell you. I'd say, I'm going to put your money to work for you just as soon as possible. So maybe a week or two weeks or a month goes by. I pick up the phone. I want to share the script right now as to exactly what I say over the phone when I would call up Dr. Fro. I call this the great news phone call. Okay. And here's the great news phone call. You answer the phone. We have a little chit chat. I say, Dr. Fro, I have got great news for you. I can now put your money to work. I've got a house in Newport under contract with an after-repaired value of $200,000. Now, the funding required matches up to what you've got in your retirement funds. The funding required for the deal is $150,000. Closing is going to be next Friday, so you'll need to have your funds wired to my real estate attorney's trust account by next Thursday. I'm going to have my attorney email you the wiring instructions. That's the end of the conversation. The most stupid thing I could have said in that little conversation was, do you want to fund the deal? Of course you want to fund the deal. You've moved your money over to the self-directed IRA company that I recommended, and you're not making any money until I put your money to work. So that, in a nutshell, is how you separate those conversations and confidently do business with your private lenders. I'm going to back up because you said you gave a lot of information. So I want to, one of the first things you said, you gave your question that you asked yourself, who can help me with this problem? So many of us type A, went to school, got great grades, A student people did it by ourselves. We didn't have the network. And we're not used to asking for help. But in real estate investing, in all of every other aspect of life, a network is where you succeed. It's just a way to think. It's not, oh my gosh, how am I going to solve this problem? Who can help me solve this problem? And I promise you, more people will come to your head than you can imagine. And if they don't, you need to get out and start talking to more people. So that's big, 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 big with real estate. Okay. Then you become an educator, not a beggar, not an asker. You under, you educate yourself on what it is you want to do. And now you're starting to educate other people on what you're doing. Make sense so far? Then we're getting into the self-directed IRA and all those kinds of things when it comes to private lending. We're going to, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So how do you have the conversation? I've got my money sitting over here in this thing that's making whatever percent. I have no idea what it's making, right? Usually most of us have no idea what that money's making. We look at it when, like last week when you saw the stock market stock market drop a thousand, like, oh my God, what's happening to my 401k? Otherwise, we don't pay attention to it. So how, well, how does that conversation go? Well, first of all, let's talk about what's a self-directed IRA. Because there are people out there that know, and I'm sure there's people out there that don't know what it is. Sure. So a self-directed IRA is also known as a third-party custodian. So a self-directed IRA is a company that's approved by the IRS. And what the self-directed IRA company is allowed to do, it cannot give any advice, cannot give any financial advice. What it is, it's like an, it's an agency that houses your retirement funds. So let's say you have current retirement funds in Schwab or mutual funds or in a previous 401k at a previous employer. And for whatever reason, you're not happy with the returns that you're getting. So what the IRS allows you to do is allows you to transfer those funds, those current funds you have, retirement funds, part of them or or all of them, over to a self-directed IRA company approved by the IRS. And there's no tax penalty. There's no tax effect that's triggered at all. 
you move it over. And once your account is funded at the self-directed IRA company, normally it takes about two weeks to three weeks to get it moved over. Then you can truly self-direct. That's why it's called a self-directed IRA. You can truly self-direct how you want to invest those funds. And you can invest those funds in a lot of different ways. You can be a private lender, as we're talking about. You can loan that money out to a real estate entrepreneur or investor and, and, and get returns, earn interest. And by the way, it's either going to be tax-deferred interest or tax-free interest, depending on the type of retirement fund you've got. You can take your retirement funds and truly self-direct and go invest in real estate. You can go buy a house. You can invest in apartment or whatever. However, remember, all the returns or the profits are going back into your retirement account and not into your personal pocket because, again, it's tax-deferred or it's tax-free. So you truly get to self-direct how you want to invest your retirement money. Got it. So instead of Schwab or Fidelity or Vanguard investing your money for you in a mutual fund, you're in this fund, this self-directed IRA that you can tell, you can call your fiduciary, your person at the self-directed company to, I'm going to invest this. They handle it all. That You just tell them what you want to do. The paperwork goes to them. All that stuff happens off your hands so that you never touch the money. It stays in that account. Please, 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 everybody realize we are not tax professionals at all. You really want to talk to your tax professional to understand all the implications, risk, complications, risks, all the things associated with this. These are things that we have done. I've used a self-directed IRA to invest in some things. Jay uses it, helps other people use theirs to make better returns than they're making in their fidelity account with less, it's a different vehicle to invest your money. So it's not tied to the stock market. Does that make sense? So you can be, you can still have your stocks, have your stocks, but you want to be diversified so that it does, they're non-correlated. One's not going up and the other one's going, they're not doing the same thing at the same time. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Um, if okay. I can say this real quick, Dr. Frove, any more of these days, I'm getting to the age. If I don't say it while it's up here, it's gone. So one easy way to think about being a private lender, what you can expect, at least when you do it, when you're doing it my way, is it's like putting your money, whether it's liquid investment or it's retirement funds, it's like putting money in the local bank in a certificate of deposit. Okay. But you're just going to make a lot more uh, interest income than you are in, in the, the local CD. CD. I've been paying, I've been paying the same thing. I've been paying 8% or 10%, depending on the position of the note. I've been paying that the same since 2009. And it's funny, real estate investors will ask me, Dr. Fro, they'll say, Jay, how in the world are you still paying your private lenders 8% and you paid them that in 2009 and now with all the interest rates going up and all that, how are you still paying them 8%? I said, well, there's two answers to that. Number one, I make the rules, not the lender. I make the rules. I said, I said, that's a big mind shift right there. Yeah. That's a 180 degree mind shift. People ask me, they say, Jay, um, how do I start? I say, well, here's how you start. It's hard to own real estate until you own the real estate between your ears. Yeah. And instead of having the mindset of it's the lender that's making all the rules, when you are the teacher, see these 47 private lenders that I've got, not one of them ever heard of private money. Before I taught them, <laughs> none of them ever heard about self-directed IRAs until I taught them, right? So how am I able to make, pay the same thing since 2009? I make the rules. You make the rules if you're the borrower. And 8% is still a whole lot more than 4% or 4.5% yes. that you can get at the local bank. Yes, yes, yes. It, that That's huge. Having your mind being the lender, becoming a bank in your head is key to being able to do this. If you're still thinking about the bank makes money, how am I, what, all those, it, it is really about owning your brain, owning your thoughts, and really wrapping your mind around this. Learning about self-directed IRAs, and there's lots of different models for that, so that that's a whole nother education. 
but that's not hard education. This is not medical school, law school, engineering kind of education. I promise you. Well, if you've done those things, you can do this. You can learn this. You're like, oh, some of it's just a matter of, I never knew this existed. I remember the first time I found out about it, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know it. And the funny thing about it is, is 99% of the public walking around has never heard of this stuff that we're talking about, private lending and self-directed IRA. And yeah. when you just bring it up in conversation, I love conversation starters or change the conversation to where you want it to go. I love, did you know questions? Yeah. I love, did you know questions? You'd be having coffee or at a social gathering, whatever. And here's one of my favorite questions is, by the way, I'm just talking along, right? I said, by the way, did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money per year tax free? Well, you just got their attention with that question. Cause of course, what am I talking about? I'm talking about having a Roth IRA in mm -hmm. a self-directed IRA company is what I'm yeah. talking about. And they'll say, no, how in the world can you make unlimited money tax free? I said, well, my follow-up question to that is, have you ever heard of self-directed IRA companies? And of course they're going to say no. Even financial advisors haven't heard of this because there's no commission in it yeah. for them. Yeah. And so then that just opens the door for a conversation. How much money is out there in self in IRAs or 401ks that just sitting over there hanging and somebody's making money off of it, but usually it's not the person who owns the thing. Well, How much is sitting out there? I'm glad you asked the question because what this answer is going to prove is that there's more money all around you. If you're listening to this show, there's more money near you in your backyard through your own connections then you'll even be able to use. There's more money than there is deals. Prior to COVID, cash sitting on the sidelines was $18 trillion. Yeah. Today, this side of COVID, $31 trillion. And look, people don't know what to do with their money. It's our ethical responsibility to relieve them of their problem and put on your teacher hat, your educator hat, and educate them. But just think about this, you guys. You have a friend who's got money sitting in an account doing nothing, and you know how they could do better, and you don't tell them. All you get to do is share. Whether they do it or not is not up to you. You can only control what you share, what comes out of your mouth. They may or may not believe you. That's not your problem. You have shared. I can't tell you how many people I share things with who don't do anything with that information for a few years. And then they come back and say, like, remember when we talked about, I was like, I thought you weren't even paying attention to me. And they remember when, and now they're ready. So all you can do and all you should do is share without any intent for anything, but to share that information. Some people will be ready right now. Some people will be ready in five years. Some people will never be ready and think you're crazy. That's not your responsibility. I love the way you put that, Dr. Fro, and, and it's so true. My 47 private lenders right now, some of them are ready. My very first private lender that, that started with $250,000, which within 24 hours became $500,000. My very first private lender was ready, ready to go. And I got to share that quick, the quick version of that story because it's so yeah. good. Here's another way I don't ask for money. Here's another way I don't ask for money. Here's a magic phrase. It's called, I need your help. Mm. I need your help. And I'm not needing their help asking them for money. Here's the short version of the story. When I was cut off from the bank, as I shared, I learned about private money, put my program together very quickly. Well, it was on Wednesday night at Bible study. Carol Joy and I went. We're very involved in the local church here. Still same church since this story I'm telling. Anyway, I walked in the foyer. There was a gentleman that I was looking for. His name was Wayne. He'd known me quite a while. I'd known him quite a while. And I asked him if we could visit for a few minutes after Bible study. He said, well, sure. So we got together. We went in the nursery. I shut the door. I looked at him. And here's exactly what I said to him. I said, Wayne, everybody in this town. And he did. He was the original. All right, this is going to be a little risky. Hardly anybody's going to know what I'm talking about. He was the original Zenith television dealer wow. in Moorhead <laughs> City, North Carolina. <laughs> And if you don't know who the Zenith television dealer was, that's you're too young to remember life before Walmart. Anyway, 
I took I took you back, didn't I? I, I got a picture of a Z of the TV, one of those thick, wide ones with oh, the. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! That's it! That's it! Anyway, I said Wayne, everybody in this town, you're connected to the Rotary Club, and then I said the magic phrase. I said I need your help. He says, "What do you need there, brother Jay?" I said, "Well, I've now opened up my real estate invis- investing business by referral only, and I'm now paying insane high rates of return." for people that come on and invest with me. When you run across somebody that's complaining about the volatility of the stock market or the low interest rates in the bank, would you refer them to me and I'll tell them about my program? Well, what do you think Wayne said? Wayne says, well, now, what you got in mind? What you doing? (laughs) What are you doing? What you doing? All right. And he says, well, what kind of rate are you paying? I said, well, Wayne, that sort of depends on the deal. I said, what sounds high to you? He says, well, we're only getting 3%, and that's what it was in 2009. He said, we're only getting 3% in the local bank, and we're losing money in the stock market. He says, I don't know, maybe 5 or 6%. I said, Wayne, I can't pay you 5 or 6%, but I can pay you 8%. He says, put me down for $250,000. And the next day, I went to his home with his wife and went through my program that I put together in detail, mm-hmm. how they're protected. I'm not borrowing unsecured funds. How can they get their money back in case of an emergency? What's the length of the notes? How often will I pay you interest, et cetera? Takes only 15 minutes to talk through it. And so, yeah, so by that visit, it was 500000 Bear in mind, I didn't bring up those two deals that I had under contract because yeah. desperation's got a smell to it. So I told him, I said, I'll call you back soon. So a few days go by and I called him up with the great news phone call and they were private lenders of mine for many years. Unfortunately, both of them have passed away now, but you see the point of that story. I'm not asking for money. I ask him to just help me spread the word. I love it. I love it. Are your deals. So there's two sides of this. You can be a private lender or you could be the person who uses, who helps people with their money make money with their money. So you could either be the lender yourself or you could be the deal finder and maker and help me, Jay, whoever, your friends make money on their money. In your business, do you, are you buying single family houses? Are you long-term holding them? What kind of strategies are you using with your business? Yeah, it depends on how I buy it and how I fund it. If if I'm using private money to fund it, then I'm doing that for my fix and flips. My average profit right now in this small little town is $82,000 per deal. Okay. And we do two to three of those a month. Two to okay. three of those a month. We're averaging about 30 a year. I don't say that, by the way, to brag. I say that to make a point. You don't have to be in a big market or big population area to make significant income. But back to your question. Now, I also do, of course, I guess private money is creative financing as well. But yeah. I was going to say, I also buy single family houses on terms, uh-huh. meaning I negotiate terms with the seller. So if they have a mortgage and they need debt relief, they need to get out from underneath that monthly payment, then I'll buy that single family house subject to the existing note where they keep the mortgage in their name. I agree to make the payments. They transfer title and ownership on those deals then I'm going to sell it on lease purchase or rent to own and actually help the buyer get a mortgage, which is different from a lot of real estate investors. So my rule is if I pay all cash, I'm wanting to cash out. If I'm buying on terms, I want to sell on terms, have the positive cash flow coming in, collect large non-refundable lease option deposits. In my market, since there's no inventory whatsoever, there is no inventory in the multiple listing service. And all of our deals we're buying what we call off market from okay. for sale by owners. Uh-huh. I'm 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 flipping houses as hard as I can. I just flipped a condominium. I only had it for five. Uh, an ocean front. You look like you're on a cruise ship. I only had it five weeks and netted after realtor fees one hundred and sixty thousand dollars just on that one condominium. But the reason I share that story, if I didn't have private money available. To close quickly, we closed in five days on that yeah. deal just seven weeks ago. I would have missed out on the deal. So uh, just to catch everybody up, yes, you need the money, but you also need the team. I'm sure Jay's not in there fixing up that condo by himself to get it <laughs> sold. So uh, we get our eyes big. 
And I want you to go back to one of the things Jay said when he was doing things, and I have the same experience, for the money only, it failed, it didn't get off the ground. When you are working to help somebody else, whether it's your private money lenders make money, whether it's that seller that's in a pickle and can't sell their place or some homeowner who's stuck with their debt that they can't, these are, you get creative to help someone, not just to make your money. And when you're helping someone, you will make money and you will do well. But that's what Money with Mission is about. That's what Jay's company is about. It's about helping, is serving, not just about making the money for yourself. Money you. comes when you serve. Absolutely. I just had to put that out there. And I got off the subject of the team because the, we start thinking, I know a lot of people in California who are going to like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm going to do it in North Carolina. or I'm going to do it in Missouri or I'm going to do it in Oklahoma, whatever. If you don't know anybody there who can help you get that stuff done, you are buying yourself another job because you're going to be flying out to Oklahoma. I live here. You can stay in my house, but I'm not building things. I'm not working and cleaning up stuff. So you have to have that stuff in order or know how you're going to make it happen before you start taking it. Just I hope that hope this is making sense to you guys. OK, there's a lot. This pride raising money again. Jay saying money is everywhere. That part is not the hard part. It's not the hard part. The rest so of it true. becomes challenging if you haven't thought it through. So true. I love, I love you and I have got so much in common, Dr. Fro, from our the mindset where our heart is coming from. Share a quick story with you that's going to emphasize the point that you just made, and that is it's about helping other people. I was riding down the road with a good friend of mine from church a few months ago. And just out of the blue, he says, Jay, I got a question for you. I said, what's that? He says, when is enough enough? Mm. And I said, I think I understand your question, but what do you mean? He says, well, you're traveling the nation. You're doing all these talks in front of real estate investors and you're doing all these real estate deals. He says, and I know that you don't have to be doing all that stuff. He says, how do you reconcile the verse in the Bible from the Apostle Paul that says to be content with whatever state of life you're in? I said, now I understand the question. And I said, Neil, let me answer your question. When is enough enough? Enough is never enough when it's not about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, enough that's... is never enough when it's not about when it's you. not about you. Now, it's partly got to be about you. It's partly got to be about you. Let, let me be. But everybody's got to win. Yeah. Everybody's got to win. So really what we're talking about here, Dr. Fro, is some deep stuff. Because a question I would encourage all the listeners to, to really take a deep dive on and ask yourself is, why are you doing what you're doing? Mm. <laughs> why, yeah. are you do why are you doing it? Unfortunately, a lot of people can't answer that question. Or the answer is for the money. I have to because I have to eat. We have to do we have, for all the the reasons that make you miserable and why you're doing what and doing what you do. It happens in medicine, it happens in law, it happens in every but when you are doing what you do for the money only, and that mm. becomes the focus, mm. it becomes a miserable existence. Yes. Yes. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> ask me how yeah, I know. But where we are today is a whole lot more happier than where we were yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes. That is the reason why I really talk about having that income coming from something else. Just thinking about that. You could be as happy as a lark in where you are, but you never know where that's going to lead you or that happiness is going to fall or I want to do something else. And it, it happens. It happened to me five years into my medical practice. I want to do something else. And I couldn't because I had no money coming from anything else. I want no other person to ever be in that position. So that's, true. That's where I am. So Jay, what do you've got going on that can help people become private lenders or start using private money to do deals they're doing? How are you helping people with that? Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited about this that I'm getting ready to announce. I just have finished recently recording my brand new seven day private money challenge. So what in the world is the private money challenge? Well, I've recorded seven short, easy to understand videos. They're like 15 to 20 minutes long. 
And it gives you all the basics of what private money is, how you could either start being a private money lender or, or using private money as a real estate investor. And, and so here it is. Here's, here's the website privatemoneychallenge.com. How about that? Okay. <laughs> privatemoneychallenge.com. Get on over there to the website. Come join me. And I promise you, you're going to learn about private money for real estate deals. And we're going to have a lot of fun engaging with each other. Is the purpose of your challenge to help someone be a private lender or to become someone who raises money through private lending. Yeah. It focuses on the real estate investor looking to raise money for their real estate deals. However, if someone wants to become a private lender, it'll give you both sides of the equation. And I think, I believe that if you want to be a private lender, you need to know that other side mm -hmm. so that you can know what they're thinking about when they're asking you. Or when mm -hmm. they're teaching you, you could even maybe give them some pointer. So now we're serving each other exactly. in a much bigger way. So exactly. I, I, I look at it from both sides. If you want to be a private lender, go take the challenge. If you want to start using funds in your real estate investing with private money, money, go do the challenge. I appreciate it. Jay, how else can people get in touch with you? Well, jayconnor.com. And by the way, I haven't said it yet on your show. I'm an ER, not an OR. So I'm J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com. <laughs> I don't know why I always spell Connor with the E-R. And then I have to go back and look and go, is it in, in my, oh yeah, it is E-R. Okay. <laughs> well, most Connors are an O-R, but I'm one of those E-Rs. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. This has been so good. Everybody, Jay's contact information will be in the show notes because I know if you're like me, you listen to podcasts, doing something else, not just, you're driving, you're tending to things, folding clothes, doing whatever, cooking dinner. It's in the show notes. So if this intrigues you, and I certainly hope it does, go to the show notes, click on something and get to the challenge. Learn about being a private lender, or if you're already doing some investing and you need some money and you want to help your friends, you can now teach them how they can be lenders. All right. Absolutely. And by the way, Dr. Fro, I didn't mention, so I just started my eighth year of my podcast. Oh, you said and, Yes. And I, I, this is going to shock you, I'm sure. But the name of my podcast is Raising Private Money. <laughs> I didn't realize you had a podcast, so I very much apologize for that. No, you're fine. <laughs> Go check out Jay's podcast, Raising Private Money. That will be in the show notes also. Perfect. Again. Subscribe to his podcast while you're going there. Don't just go there. Hit subscribe. <laughs> and when you subscribe to his, come back and subscribe to mine if you haven't done that already. All right. I've heard that. Jay, thank you so much for being here. This has been so much fun. I really appreciate it. Dr. Fro, God bless you and thank you for having me. Thank you. You've been listening to Money with Mission. There are projects happening right now where you can have a great financial return while positively affecting the lives of others. To learn more about our opportunities, go to moneywithmission.com. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.